Our New Testament reading for this morning is from Ephesians, the fifth chapter, Paul's letter to the church there at, at Ephesus. And we're reading verses 1 to 5 and then 8 to 14, or 9 to 14. Therefore, imitate God like dearly loved children. Live your life with love. Follow the example of Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. He was a sacrificial offering that smelled sweet to God. Sexual immorality of any kind, of impurity or greed, shouldn't even be mentioned among you, which is right for holy persons. Obscene language, silly talk, or vulgar jokes aren't acceptable for believers. Instead, there should be thanksgiving. Because you know for sure that persons who are sexually immoral, impure, or greedy, which happens when things become gods, those persons won't inherit the kingdom of Christ and God. Now for verse 8. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So live your life as children of light. Light produces fruit that consists of every sort of goodness, justice, and truth. Therefore, test everything to see what pleases the Lord. And don't participate in the unfruitful actions of darkness. Instead, you should review, reveal the truth about them. It's embarrassing to even talk about what certain persons do in secret. But everything exposed to the light is revealed by the light. Everything that is revealed by the light is light. Therefore, it says, wake up, sleeper. Get up from the dead and Christ will shine on you. These are the words of God. For the people of God. Well, we are in our, our fifth week in this series called Hashtag Struggles. Following Jesus in a selfie-centered world. It's kind of a leap out of a book written by Pastor Craig Groeschel of the Life Church. And, you know, we face some unique things. I mean, well, they're not exactly unique, but they get magnified by media, by the internet, by Facebook, and we use that as kind of the stand-in for, for everything else. Um, and this week, our, our theme or our talk is about integrity and reviving integrity. Um, I couldn't have planned it this way, but this week, we saw a man's integrity just under attack all week long. Judge Kavanaugh. It really was, I mean, it, it's just a riveting drama. It, it's hard to turn away, almost like watching a NASCAR race where you watch to see who's going to crash. And at the same time, we're riveted to it, and at times it just kind of turns your stomach. The whole thing's about a man's face to the world is not the man underneath. It's a challenge to his personal integrity. And then he himself defending and, and, and proclaiming and saying, the man you see in front of you now is the man I have always been. And at the same time, there's none of us sitting in the room that could say we're the same person we were 36 years ago. And I'm not here, and we're not going to talk about which is which, but to talk about integrity in this technology-driven, Facebook, selfie-centered world in which we struggle. Now, those of us sitting here may not struggle so much with the technology Facebook side of it, but integrity has been an issue that mankind struggles with well quite frankly forever but Paul was writing about this to the to the church there in Ephesus and but the issue is that this technology driven Facebook world can just magnify it even 
more. So let's talk about integrity. Integrity is consistency. That a person with integrity is a person of one mind who's the same person in public as they are in private. Or to put it the other way around, a person with integrity is a person who is the same in private as they are in public. The same when no one's watching. Fully integrated. And technology, Facebook and all these other things, present two distinct challenges. One is that it's easy to put up a false front. It's easy to put it out there, the person that you want to be. I mean, there's those, you know, you all hear those, those advertisements for, uh, by Dr. Neil Clark Warren about how you can find your perfect match there on whatever the name of the site is, but people put up false, false profiles. But the other side of it is that the technology, the Facebook, the Internet, can lure us into things that we would not think of doing in public. And again, of course, none of those are unique to the technology itself, but the technology and the media and Facebook makes it even just more prominent, more in your face. As we watch people put things up on Facebook, it's easy and tempting to just see how wonderful life is and that we only think good thoughts and that life is always pleasant. And maybe, maybe we do that to remind ourselves that in the midst of difficulties, there are good things, there are good times that happen. But it's not a whole lot different then we meet and greet people and shake hands and say, how was your day? Oh, it's fine. It's a, it's a social greeting. And some of us do those things on Facebook in very uplifting ways. And lots of folks do. But it's rare that it's done in balance. We all know our person on Facebook or wherever and I think back in the little Abner days, it was Joe, you know, with the dark cloud over his head. We all know the person that there's only the bad things that show up on, on Facebook and you eventually decide, no, I, I'm not going to follow that stuff anymore. Those of you who don't know, it's, well, anyway. But rarely do we see a lot of balance of life as a mixture of things. And we put up false fronts. And, and we can even get drawn into that false front ourselves. And we shove all that other stuff down and underneath. And it bubbles out in places that we don't expect it to come out. But there's the even darker side of the technology that, that eases that access and lures us into things that we just don't need to be involved with. You know, and certainly... Pornography gets an awful lot of the attention. But there's things that other that folks get sucked into, whether it's online gambling, and certainly none of us would be involved with the online gambling, but there's games. Did you know there's games you can play? And if you get enough points, you can actually win money or you can win stuff. And it's easy to get sucked into that thing. Or shopping. Shopping, do you know Amazon has a thing where you can actually click just one button and you can buy it right on the spot called one-click buying? And you can get sucked into it where it can, it can just drain your bank account and, can, and fill up the... And again, even that's not new because there's Home Shopping Network and QVC and get sucked into that. And it's hard to turn it off once they get on a topic that you're interested in. Or... Tracking down, one of the neat things of Facebook is be able to find old friends that you've lost touch with since high school, since college, and so forth. But did you know that it's very rare now in divorce filings to find that Facebook is not there? Because people find old flames and they get attracted and it undermines and breaks up 
marriages. Now certainly, Facebook isn't the only way that happens. But it makes it easy. And it's not only Facebook that deals with this false front kind of thing, that deals with this integrity issue, you know. And here's what we get faced with, and we're analyzing whether it doesn't matter which side of the aisle, but politicians who are one thing in public and another thing in private. What this political theater all week has been about. And quite frankly, the same thing happens with pastors. There's hardly a week goes by that we don't see something in the news about a pastor who was one thing in public and another thing in private. And they're e either lost their church or brought up on charges. And you can hear the utter glee of Satan giggling at and another one bites the dust. It can be easy to be lured by the technology, by the media. There's even the ad campaigns, advertisement campaigns. Do you remember the campaign back some years ago? I think it was in the late 90s. The image is everything. Image is everything. It was an advertisement for, can, for Canon, for, for, for uh, cameras. But it really was about the image of the person presenting it. Or here's another ad campaign that says what happens, you know, the privacy thing. What happens privately is different than what happens publicly. Do you remember this one? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Actually, in, in actually impelling, actually driving this idea that what's private doesn't matter. But a person with integrity, a person who is a fully integrated person, is the same in private as they are in public. But in this day of, of, of public faces and private faces, the counsel of Scripture, both Old and New Testament, has always been, don't have two faces. It's always, be one. So let's look a little more closely at this passage in Ephesians, and then we'll go back to our psalm that we looked at this morning. Ephesians 5 verse 1 said, Imitate God like dearly loved children. Live your life with love following the example of Christ. Why? We skip down to verse 5. Because you know for sure that persons who are sexually immoral, impure, or greedy, which happens when things become gods, those persons won't inherit God's kingdom. Verse 8. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So live your life as children of light. And there are fruit, the result of being light. That's not holding, keeping things in the dark. The fruit is goodness, justice, and truth. Don't participate in the unfruitful actions of darkness. Verse 12, it's just plain embarrassing to even talk about what certain persons do in secret. Yes, it's embarrassing. We don't want to talk about those kinds of things. And Jesus said, Woe to you Pharisees, you tie up heavy burdens on others, but you won't lift a finger to help. You don't keep it yourself. You keep it in the dark. You keep it hidden. So what is integrity? Integrity is living as children of light. Nothing to hide. Nothing to keep in the dark. Now, lest we get a little bit smug, maybe a little bit too content with ourselves, let's, let's be honest. 
We all have things we don't want others to know. Even our family members, even our, our closest friends. Maybe it's just that little something that's a little bit embarrassing. Maybe it's a, a flaw, an illness and we make excuses about. Maybe it's that we just know things in our lives to be sinful. You see, we all have places in our lives where we need the light of Christ so that we live a life of integrity, a life of consistency where we no longer cling to those dark places where we end up living with a false front. So what do we do about that? How do we handle that? How do we let the light of Christ penetrate deeply into our lives? I well, think first, we have to recognize, we have to recognize that there will be places that we struggle with that we keep hidden and bring it before God to let God show us ways to actually and actively pursue light in all things. It's been said that no one stumbles into right living. <laughs> right living only happens when we do it on purpose. We read Psalm 15 earlier. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who can live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what's righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor, casts no slurs on others, who despises a vile person, who keeps an oath even when it hurts. who lives all of life consistently, consistent with the light of Christ. It's a person who lives in integrity, who lives consistently both in public and in private. So, recognize that each of us are vulnerable. Each of us will have spots that we struggle. And then look at where and when are you most vulnerable. Name it. Name it. What's that spot? When you're tired? Feeling alone? And yes, even in the midst and amongst people that we love, even our family, it can feel like being alone. And we end up playing on social media or whatever and with a few clicks we can end up someplace that we really shouldn't be. In days gone by, it wasn't Facebook. In days gone by, it was the magazine rack. And yes, even good housekeeping can lead you into places where you get discontent with where you are and what you have. Maybe, maybe it's at, at, at the counter at the quick trip and, and it's the lottery. We, we know about those millionaires who've lived, whose lives were changed for the better because they had that lottery ticket. And how many, how many dollars later, it's an embarrassment to even mention it, how much got spent. Maybe it's just browsing on TV, looking for something to watch, and you end up with something that's innocent enough, and yet it ends up being just poisonous to your soul, or maybe it's an addiction to the soap opera of politics. We know of families who got addicted to the soap opera of politics and people can no longer talk to each other because that's what consumed their minds. And that dark place that jumps out and tears apart personal relationships. So where, where and what is your vulnerable spot to keep hidden, to keep in the dark? Proverbs 5 says it this way, the way to deal with that. Proverbs 5 says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom and bend your ear to what I know. The lips of a mysterious woman drip honey and her tongue is smoother than oil. Stay on a path that is far from her. Don't approach the entrance to her house. Now, I don't think the writer of the proverb is speaking just about prostitutes. He's talking about anything 
that draws us and sucks us away from God. Stay far away from it. David wrote in Psalm 16, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Name those places where you are most vulnerable to crossing the line and set a firm boundary. Run, flee, put up a boundary to keep you from falling into those traps. If it's matters of money, maybe it needs to be cut up the credit cards, as Dave Ramsey would say. Or maybe it's to use some kind of envelope system, as he would say, and some have others, that we don't spend on what we don't need to be spending on. Maybe on the internet it's putting up filters to block content. Maybe on Facebook it's putting a time limit. Who knows? But what are the boundaries that need to be set to keep us protected? And then actively cultivate God's peace. We often end up seeking to soothe our emptiness to fill those dark spaces with stuff. And the world out there actively pursues and actually tries to teach us that the only thing in the universe is stuff. And that stuff is what you need. But we know the truth of it is that we have God who is our Creator who earnestly desires that we would be in relationship with Him. And that is the only road to contentment so stay in the Scriptures because that's how God has chosen to reveal Himself to us in this day. Jesus Christ was known as the Word. Left the written Word for us. Cultivating God's peace, we need to cultivate healthy relationships with each other as a church family, with openness to each other and openness to our, within our families. For truly each part of us, with Christ dwelling in us, we are Christ to each other. Cultivate God's peace. So recognize it. See where you're most vulnerable. Set boundaries. Cultivate God's peace. And be accountable. Be accountable. The 12-step program for alcoholics understands that principle. They are accountable to each other and commit to that kind of accountability. John Wesley, the founder of our Methodist movement, understood that principle of accountability too. He had small accountability groups. He called them bands. We call them accountability groups. And each week they would face each other and ask the question, how is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? Is there something we need to confess to each other to root out those dark places where who you are in private is different from who you are in public? So there it is. Integrity. It's a person with one mind. Not a private and a public, but a person of one mind. With all of that in mind, I want to read to you what John wrote. This is the message that we've heard from him and announced to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in Him at all. If we claim we have fellowship with Him and live in the darkness, we are lying and do not act truthfully. But if we live in the light in the same way as He is in the light, we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from every sin. Oh, and that happens in the light. Verse 8, if we claim we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, 
He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. These are the words of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Father, You have given us Your Son, Jesus. You have given to Him to us as light and life to the world. But He's also here for us to give light into our lives that we might become fully integrated. Oh Lord, oh Lord, that we would open ourselves to Your light, that we would be men and women of integrity, the same people in public as we are in private. Teach us to walk in Your light. For it's in Your name we pray. Amen.